still waiting for the okay okay so for this chapter if you are referring to the formula sheet you basically have one two three four formula only okay for this chapter which is equation 59 and 362 I'm going to list it down over here so that later on you can refer 59 to 62. So you have sigma equals to F over A. You have epsilon equals to E over L naught. And then you have Y equals to sigma over epsilon. And then lastly, you have U equals to half f e okay so most of the calculation will comes from subtopic 11.2 subtopic 11.1 uh we learn about some of the theoretical part uh, okay. okay so for subtopic 11.1 you need to be able to distinguish between stress and strain so you need to be able to know what is stress and what is strain and then there's important graph which is graph of stress against strain and then we will discuss elastic and plastic deformation with the force elongation graph okay so stress is basically a ratio of force per unit area so stress we use a symbol of sigma you can the sigma equals to force per unit area this is a ratio so if you want to go to into details the force need to be perpendicular to the cross-sectional area so if i want to draw let's say this is my object over here it's a cylindrical rod Okay, so if I apply some force in this direction, so you will expect the force to be perpendicular to the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area will be this one, ataupun yang, yang kat atas ni kan, which is pretty much the same with the one that I draw over here. Okay, and the ratio between the force and the area is what we call stress okay the unit would be kg meter minus 1 s minus 2 that one comes from ma over area or it will be force in newton area in meter square right so you have newton per meter square or alternatively normally we use a pascal okay basically the same unit lah tiga tiga boleh pakai cuma biasanya we use pascal Okay, any questions so far? No, sir. Okay, so basically if the question asks you how much stress uh, being felt by this object, so basically the question wants to find the ratio between the force applied on the object over the area. So if you apply the force in that direction, you expect that it has certain elongation, right? So those elongation actually you can relate with the strain. Okay, where strain is basically the ratio of extension to the original length. We use the symbol strain. We use a symbol epsilon. Okay, it is a ratio between the elongation E over original length. So this is our original length, our object over here. So The original length we call this one as l naught okay so if you apply some force in that direction maybe this object will be will be stretched a little bit okay so how much it is being stretched that one depends on the strength of the material lagi kuat lagi sikit lah. so this extension 
sometimes also called as elongation. We use the symbol E. Okay. So this would be the new length. Okay. And then if you minus with the L not there, so you expect to have the elongation. The padang yang bawah tu. Okay, so I can rewrite this equation extension. So extension ni kalau saya nak tukar dalam bentuk L, saya tulis apa? Apa tolak apa? L besar L tolak L not. Okay, good. L minus L not. Right. So you have a unit of meter dekat extension ni. And then you have a unit of meter over there. <coughs> so the unit for string... What is the unit for strain that you expect? Kamu rasa? Apa unit strain tu? There's no unit. Yes, there's no unit. First of all, because it is a basically a ratio. So ratio to the unit lah. And then plus that uh, you have meter per meter. So that one cancel out. Okay. So it's a bit different compared to the stress just now lah. Walaupun this still ratio. Tapi they basically a different unit lah. So this one you have a unit of no unit. As long as the unit for L is the same, then it should be okay. Okay. Both of these is scalar quantity. There's no direction. So, you don't have to worry about vector. And then, that's it. That is about stress and strain. So, you should be able to differentiate. Eh? Kena boleh bezakan lah. Apa itu stress, apa itu strain. Strain tu they relate dengan uh, elongation. Okay. Stress tu more to force per unit area you need to be able to differentiate because uh, in the formula sheet they only give you symbol so kalau kamu confused which one is stress and which one is strain then you mix up everything lah. so stress is F over A strain is elongation over the initial length ok so if you referring to the Let's note there's few more quantities ataupun few more properties of material that you guys need to know. That strength, ability of material to withstand force without breaking, stiffness, kekuatan, eh, resistance of material to change in shape and size. So there's a difference between strength and stiff. Eh? Strength uh, withstand without breaking, stiff, resistant to changes, elasticity uh, enables certain object to deform and then goes back to the initial shape or form. Ductility, tendency of material to change its size and shape before breaking. And brittleness is basically rapo lah, the tendency to break. So example for ductility is like you have aluminium can. Yang tin tu kan, aluminium tu kalau kamu tekan, dia kemek. Dia tak pecah, dia kemek je. Tapi eventually kalau kamu press hard enough, it will start to break lah. And then Example for brittle object is such as a glass. So, kalau kamu try to bend a glass, it will uh, shatter lah, instead of bend. Okay, and then we have a graph of force against extension, which is pretty much the same graph with the... Uh, let me set the graph that I say about to So, I think I'm going to bring this one a little bit down. Because, yeah. So we have a graph of force against extension, F against E, which is the same graph with the stress against strain. Stress ini simbol dia apa? Sigma. Ha? Huh? Sigma. This is stress. And this is strain graph. So these two graphs, basically you have the same shape. Eh? The only difference is that you have a different level on the axis. Lah. And then the discussion on this graph is pretty much the same. So normally, old syllabus, they used to ask you to draw this inside your paper too. Okay? But I think for your syllabus, maybe they will ask you in... Uh, EPS 
So for graph F against E, so it will be F, which is in Newton, against elongation, which is in meter. Alternatively, you can have a graph of sigma, which is stress. You got to get that unit for stress. What is the unit for stress? Pascal. Apa dia? Pascal. Yes, very good. Okay, good. Very good. It will be Pascal against epsilon, which does not have any unit. Dia tak ada unit lah. Okay, the shape of the graph will always look like this. Okay, it start with a straight line. Okay. And then, other reason eh, kenapa dia macam ni. So, you start with straight line. And then, you have a little curve. Okay. And then, you have another over the hill punya curve. Oops. Tinggi sangat pula. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So, if they ask you to draw, as long as you can draw shape like this, then should be okay. You start with a straight line. And then, add a curve sedikit. And then, add a curve yang macam hill tu. Okay. So, each of these ada main peranan lah. Each of these point ada perbezaan dia. So, point here to point here is a different thing. Point here to point there ada maksud dia sendiri. And we're going to go through each point of this. So, I'm going to label this one. Same with your uh, let you know so that it is easier for you guys to refer back. So, according to lecture notes, label as something like this. Obviously, you can label with a different symbol and so on. Okay. So, if you look from O to A, actually the lines is a straight line. Okay. The reason why it is a straight line because from O to A, Okay, so the object obeys hooks on. Okay, the way that you want to see this graph is that it is actually force against extension ataupun stress against strain. So maybe I can copy down the diagram over here. Okay, you can imagine eh, when you try to increase the force, okay, you basically have extension. Okay, so if it obeys Hooke's law, example, let's say we are discussing about yeah, Hooke's law, obviously spring. Lah. Okay, let's say this is a spring, right? So when we try to pull or apply some force in that direction, Obviously, it start to extend. So, point from O to A, describing those extension. Okay, so daripada asal rapat, then it panjang, panjang, and panjang like that. Okay, O to A, it still obey the hooks law. Okay, up until point A. And then that at point A is actually a proportionality limit. Pro, for Proportionality limit. Anything above the proportionality limit means that it does not obey the Hooke's law anymore. Okay. In fact, once they're being stretched longer daripada limit the contohnya kan spring tadi. Ah, uh, springnya kalau kamu tarik dia panjang enough, you start to when you release, bila kamu lepaskan force tu, dia ada permanent deformation. Faham tak maksud saya? Macam ni asal. Kamu tarik. Macam ni. Kamu lepas, dia panjang sikit. Can you imagine? Yes. Okay. So from O to A ni, bila kamu tarik, kamu lepas, dia akan goes back to the initial form initial shape. Length dia akan balik semula kepada R0 ni. Okay. Tapi, kalau kamu tarik dia kuat sangat, bila kamu lepas, then it has a little bit of permanent uh, 
permanent deformation elongation tak ada permanent so it wouldn't go to L0 dia akan pergi kepada new L0 to so, the panjang sedikit okay. so that one after point A okay. so mana nota kamu so that one is actually dekat point B to and above eh? this is the elastic limit so B is actually the elastic limit so you, you expect uh, from point B to point C even though it will try to go back to the initial shape or length but you still have the that permanent deformation right it permanently stretch and will never regain its original shape or length okay so kalau kamu lepas maybe you expect to have something like this lah the length to the berubah okay so point b to c got a permanent stretch Okay, and then if you keep on applying, okay, applying the force, then it will start to change the internal structure of the material. Okay, that, that point is actually point C. So point C we call as a yield point. Anything above the yield point, basically, they are the permanent, they memang dia tak akan jadi elastic deformation lagi lah. So, kalau kamu tengok kat nota kamu, from O to B, they consider this as B, eh, B, B. Sampai sini, they consider as elastic deformation. Elastic macam spring lah. Kamu tarik, it goes back to the initial shape. Dia ada uh, nak balik semula kepada benda asal. Tapi, after you pass the yield point, kalau force kamu tu kuat sangat, dia jadi plastic deformation. Jadi, plastic deformation ni maybe you can imagine like plastic lah. Kalau plastic tu, kalau kamu tarik, dia macam ada stretch mark kan nampak tu putih tu kan dia tak patah balik kepada yang asal ini adalah plastic deformation so any object actually kalau yang any ductile object initially it will undergo elastic punya deformation tapi kalau kamu tarik dia kuat sangat dia start to undergo the plastic deformation okay faham ke tak ni? faham sir faham sir faham sir so at the yield point actually kamu punya position of atom sudah berubah okey so contohnya katakanlah kamu ada objek initially atoms kamu tu sit on top of each other lah the atoms tapi kalau dekat yield point tu kamu punya yang tengah dengan yang hujung ni maybe dah beralih dia dah memang totally disfigure lah dia dah tak sama kalau above the yield point yeah. so yang D tu maximum force point so above that one dia dah tak boleh handle more so this one is considered as maximum force and the last one is the breaking point okay, okay contoh eh Katakan kamu bayangkan ni sebagai balloon tau. So dekat point C tu, if you stretch the balloon hard enough, kalau asalnya dia akan balik semula ke asal kan elastik. Tapi kalau balloon tu kamu stretch dia hard enough, you start to see the stretch mark. Macam ada putih-putih dekat balloon tu kan. And those stretch mark dia permanent. So this period, this part is, uh, you basically increase the stretch tu lah. Stretch mark tu makin lama makin bertambah. At point D is the maximum force that the object can sustain. Okay. Lepas tu kalau kamu nak koyakkan dia, dia jadi senang sedikit kalau kamu perasan lah. Bila kamu nak C ke D ni, kamu kena apply force yang banyak sampai maximum force. 
And then after point D tu dia macam tarik dia macam dah tak menarik balik semula. Macam senang lah nak koyak. Lepas tu dekat E tu dia break. Okay. So you can imagine any object that basically undergoes elastic and plastic. Okay. For this graph. So it's up to you guys lah nak bayangkan apa. Okay ada soalan so far. Tak ada sir. Tak ada. Okay. okay so obviously not all object undergoes elastic dengan plastik tu. Okay ada certain object dia tak undergoes pun plastik deformation. Okay. And yang object yang tak obey hooks law kita ada dalam syllabus lah. So ada certain object yang ada dalam syllabus kamu dia only undergoes the elastic deformation. Okay. Kalau dia elastic deformation dia sampai sini and then dia breaks itu maksudnya objek tu adalah brittle. So if you have a brittle object, you only have this part of the deformation. Contohnya glass lah. Jadi saya cukup tunjuk. Hmm. Ikat kan saya lukis balik graf tu. So apa guna graf ni? Graf ni sebenarnya nak menunjukkan sama ada objek tu kuat ke tak kuat? Boleh lentur ke tak boleh lentur? So those kind of thing can be translate from the graph itself. Okay. So katakanlah kamu ada graph with a high gradient like that. So yang ni yang OB hook semua. Satu tu tinggi, satu tu tak tinggi macam ni. Kan? So the difference is that oops bentuk tu masih sama kat sini. Macam ni. Yo. Okay, uh, maybe I should draw it properly but it looks something like that. I hope you can see that. So let's say I label this one as F and against elongation, <coughs> the F against E again, which is in meter. Okay, so what does this two graph tells you is that graph yang blue color dengan green color, kalau ikut pandangan kamu, mana yang lagi kuat, mana yang lagi stiff, mana yang lagi... Uh, harder ataupun uh, mana yang boleh resist more force before it undergoes any changes kamu rasa? biru ke hijau yang kuat? biru biru tu lagi kuat eh? so basically kalau kamu ada high gradient maksudnya force kamu kena apply banyak tapi dia punya elongation tu sikit je ok compared to the green tu, kalau kamu apply the same force, you have more elongation. Okay, itu beza between blue and green. So, you can say that uh, object say I put this one as A and this one is B. So, I can write down that object A has is more stiff. Then, object B. Okay. Kalau saya cakap pasal strength, uh, saya kena cakap dia break. Okay, in fact, dia lagi kuat lah sebab dia break kat sini. Ini dia break kat bawah. So, you can see that this one is more stiff ataupun more strength. Okay, lagi kuat ataupun lagi keras. Itu beza dia kalau bahasa Melayu lah. <coughs> And then you have brittle object like I told you before. So brittle object maybe sit somewhere over here. So dia ada straight line je. And then dia terus break. So this one indicates that object is brittle. Okay. And then if you trying to plot yang graph ni sama ada F against E ataupun sigma over E kan. Sekejap. Sigma over epsilon. Sorry. S 
Okay, kalau kamu tengok ini sebagai graph of sigma against epsilon, so that means dia punya gradient ni, m dia, sama dengan delta y over delta x, betul tak? So, delta y dia actually adalah sigma, delta x dia adalah epsilon. So, the gradient here actually represent a ratio between sigma and extension tadi, uh, elongation. Eh. Mm. Strain, sorry. Yo. So, this one is pressure and strain. So, the ratio between pressure and strain actually indicate sama ada objek tu lagi kuat ataupun lagi tak kuat. Boleh bayangkan tak? Boleh relate tak? Boleh, sir. Okay. And this relation actually represent the young modulus. Okay. So, you will expect that young modulus actually indicates sama ada certain object tu dia kuat ke tak kuat. Okay. It is basically the ratio between the tensile stress to the tensile strain. Okay. If the proportionality need has not been exit. So, kita hanya discuss pasal ni and they discuss sama ada ratio between this one and this one besar ke kecil. Kalau lagi besar, dia lagi stiff. Okay. Lagi stiff and then dia punya cerun dia lagi stiff. So, they may be tanya graph-graph macam ni dekat dalam UPS kamu. So, you need to be able to understand lah. So, I can say that another point from here is that my young modulus for A is bigger than my young modulus than B. Simply by looking at the gradient of the graph. Okay. So, the young modulus actually depends on the material dia bergantung pada material lah. Different material ada different value. Aluminium ada satu value. Steel ada satu value. Uh, nickel ada satu value. Contohnya, let's say B is nickel then A contohnya adalah steel. Dia ada satu value je. And different shape sentiasa macam ni lah. It depends on the type of the material. So the unit for this one will be Pascal as well because Uh, stress tu yang atas ni kan dan unit pascal yang bawah ni tak ada unit so it will be pascal lah you left with pascal so basically SI unit generally for this chapter kita pakai pascal senang senang nak ingat senang nak tulis again this is a scalar quantity dia tak ada better and then if I want to write more into this as let's say I want to ganti values of sigma dengan epsilon tu sigma tu adalah stress which is f over a okay and yang epsilon tu sebenarnya adalah elongation e over l not l not tu sebut ni atas so you left with this one okay alternatively you can write the formula to something like this this is the given formula in the formula sheet And this one you can deduce straight away lah. Tak ada masalah pun. Biasanya maklumat yang diberi something like this. Hmm. So most likely you will be using this formula ya. Yeah. Kalau kamu nak dirah, tak susah pun. Dia senang dia. Okay and at the same time, sometimes uh, you might have to find the relation between the hooks wrong. Okay, katakanlah dia suruh cari. Dia jarang tanya eh. Tapi katakanlah dia suruh cari. So, relation between yang modulus and hooks law ataupun biasanya hooks constant lah. Hooks law tu datang daripada force. Okay, so force is equals to KE because kita cakap pasal benda yang straight line ni kan. So, yang straight line ni kalau kamu ingat lagi kat atas we discuss that the straight line represent the one that obeys the hook law and hook law is F equals to KE so always obey KE lah so L not over A E. So, I can cancel out the E easily so in terms of K 
then you will have y yang modulus multiply with a divided by L not okay so k is a hook's constant okay so how any question no sir okay so you can imagine that this one something that obvious hooks law obviously spring kan kita biasa bayangkan spring lah tapi dia sebenarnya bukan spring kan dia any object kalau kamu ingat lagi spring if you apply some work to stretch the spring those work returns into a strain energy okay sometimes also called as stored energy so the work done to extend ataupun to uh, extend lah to extend and any object dia akan jadi stored energy okay we call that stored energy as strain energy okay so the work done to extend object okay it turns into stored energy okay you expect that kalau objek tu boleh uh, adalah elastic material then all the work done to akan fully jadi stored energy and when you release dia akan back to the energy yang asalnya balik tadi contohnya kalau macam kamu main pistol mainan tu kan kamu tarik spring dia and then bila kamu tembak dia jadi balik kinetic energy so you potential kinetic tu dia memang fully uh, converted lah dia tak ada loss of energy pun okay so the stop energy here is what we call the strain energy okay if let's say if i want to plot graph of force against extension kalau kamu ingat lah ini graph ni sebenarnya datang daripada hooks law which is chapter 4 lah F and against extension E so if you pull the uh, spring obviously it undergoes extension okay so the work done is the force being used and the area over here is basically the work done. Okay, the work done is equals to energy stored ataupun kita panggil dia sebagai energy strain. We call this one as strain energy lah. We use a symbol U, the unit will be joule. The formula would be half F E. Kenapa dia half? Sebab ini adalah formula untuk rectangle bawah ni. Dia sentiasa rectangle because this one sentiasa straight line. Okay. So area under the graph would be half multiply with the base multiply with the height which is half F E lah. So dia sentiasa macam ni. So U equals to half F E. The unit would be in joule. Okay, so at the same time, there is satu lagi uh, quantity we call that one as strain energy per unit volume. Okay, kenapa benda ni uh, main peranan? Because strain energy ni kita tak cakap pun dia punya volume tu berapa. Maybe kalau objek tu besar, then you expect the strain energy to be bigger lah. Tapi doesn't means that they boleh stop more energy. So it depends on the volume as well. So, sebab tu kita sometimes want to define this one as strain energy per unit volume. So, dia ada a little bit of uh, derivation, tak susah pun. So, if you guys still remember, kita ada stress dengan strain tadi. Which is equals to F over A dengan strain which is extension over a lot. 
Okay. If I want to substitute this two, that the F dengan E, maksud nak, nak masuk dalam ni balik. So that means I can write down F equals to sigma A. This one becomes E equals to epsilon R naught. So If I substitute 1 and 2 Then my equation now becomes Half Sigma A Multiply with the Epsilon L naught Okay and if I rearrange, I can have sigma epsilon A L naught. A L naught over here is actually the volume. Okay, contoh eh, kalau saya ada rod tadi, A would be my cross-sectional area, like this. This is A. The length over here is my L naught. So, kalau surface area multiply with the length, you will get the volume. So, this one is basically the volume lah. And if I bring the volume down there, saya bawa ke sebelah sana, so it becomes U over V. So, this one is what we call strain energy per unit volume. Okay, and the unit would be joule per meter cube. Okay, you have to be careful lah. It depends on the question. So, I'm going to ask strain energy ke, strain energy per unit volume. And, biasanya dia tanya strain energy per unit volume because normally you have this information. Okay, information ni biasa ada lah. Information yang graph ni, kalau dikasih graph, then you can calculate the strain energy. Or else, most likely they ask you to calculate the strain energy per unit volume. They use a different quantity. Yang ni adalah sigma multiply with the epsilon. Stress multiply with the strain. Yang ni adalah Fe. So, you have to be careful a little bit. Eh? And remember that this formula is not given in the formula sheet. Saya so, tunjuklah ke atas tadi. Formula sheet kita hanya ada empat formula ni ya. Okay. Oops. So, the half sigma epsilon stress strain tu tak termasuk dalam formula sheet. That one represent U over V. Okay. Ini hanyalah U. So, jangan confuse kat situ je. So, masalah student kat chapter ni, they always confuse that value. Kalau kamu tak confuse, then shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So, before we start, any question tak? So far. No, sir. Tak ada. Tak ada. Okay, I just want to compare between, I, would, I just want to do comparison between elastic deformation and plastic deformation. So, elastic, what is the difference between these two? Eh? Elastic deformation, it obeys hooks. Oh. They are straight line too. Okay, obviously the other one does not obey lah. Yang ni yang curve tu. Ada curve over the hill yang saya cakap tu. Does not obey hooks. Okay, and then uh, it does not change the internal structure of wire. Ataupun object lah. Uh, internal structure. Maintain. So macam saya tunjuk yang tadi Yang atom sit on top of each other Bila kamu tarik basically <coughs> Dia just meregang dia Dia just jarak dia bertambah Tapi bila kamu lepas Dia bercantum balik Kalau yang plastic deformation Basically dia slide 
Okay, so internal structure dia berubah. Eh? Internal structure changes. Okay, this is point number two lah. Point number three is that the energy stored during its acid de deformation is fully recovered. So, strain energy fully recovered bila dia being released. Okay. On the other hand, plastic deformation ni bila kamu lepas, energy tu dah jadi heat. Okay, so basically, kalau elastic deformation, you apply some work untuk stretchkan objek tu, when you release, those energy kamu boleh recover. Okay, but for plastic deformation, if you apply some energy ataupun work done to deform uh, plastic, then those energy transform into heat. Okay. 